Good afternoon. Welcome to this afternoon's performance on our Music on Madison series. I have a few announcements. If you do not receive our mailings, I encourage you to pick up one of these season brochures on the way out or during intermission. Uh, and also, if you're not on our mailing list, email list or postal mail list, you can sign up at the back to receive our announcements. The next performance on our series is two weeks from today, November the 13th. It'll be um, a particularly special one. We'll be welcoming Dame Emma Kirkby, who is an English soprano and really an amazing proponent of the early music performance movement. It'll actually be her third performance on our series, and she's uh, asked to sing here while she's on tour in the US. And so it'll be a fascinating performance of 16th and 17th century song, English song, as well as some Italian works as well. And she'll be joined by her own lutenist, Jakob Lindbergh. And so Emma Kirkby and uh, Jakob Lindbergh will be here in two weeks from today, 3 p.m., Sunday the 13th of November. Um, at this point, I should ask that you be sure that you have your electronic devices silenced or turned off. And following the performance, there will be a reception in the church house lobby. And you can get to that space through either of the doors at the front of the church or the back of the church on my right. And so please join me in welcoming Margaret Mills to the chancel. neglected to make one uh, housekeeping mention, and there's a slight change in the order in the first half. Um, Ms. Mills is going to make what you might call a Ruth Crawford sandwich. Um, she's going to play the two Ruth Carf Crawford preludes in between the Amy Beach pieces. So after the Allegretto, she will put the Ruth Crawford pieces there and then play the final two pieces of Amy Beach from the improvisations.
Hello, I'm so glad you're here to enjoy this wonderful music that I have played for years. As a matter of fact, it was just a few years ago that we celebrated Amy Beach's 350th birthday. So I don't know whether this is how near, I, I, don't, I haven't done the math. Anyway, so you may recognize some of this music that I played this time, and I hope you enjoy it. <clears throat> Um, talking about Amy Beach takes us back to the Victorian era. Uh, <clears throat> she was brought up in uh, New England and then moved, the whole family moved to Boston so she would be able to hear the very best compo uh, composers and performers. She became a fantastic pianist and debuted with the Boston Symphony at age 18. And very soon after that debut, she married <coughs> a, a, a Dr. H. H. A. Beach, who was a very respected and very high socially uh, placed doctor in the region. And he, I think it was a very happy marriage, but he um, told her that he thought since she was his wife, that she ought not to be on stage anymore, so please do not teach and please do not play. <laughs> I, I must admit, I feel a kinship with that because when I became engaged to a socially prominent person in New York City, I was asked to give up <clears throat> teaching, not playing, but I was gave up teaching. And I did not give up teaching, I did not give up playing, and I've had some wonderful years since. Uh, and that was the uh, Victorian era and women were not supposed to be seen on stage. At any rate, <clears throat> and then we come to a, a very fascinating person, uh, Ruth Crawford. I don't know whether that name means anything to you at all. It did not mean anything not to, to me at the time, but the more I read about it, the more I saw that she was involved with the Seeger family. She, she was born in Florida, and from, um, her father was a Methodist minister. And um, she became very well known there for her musicality. And someone suggested she ought to go to New York and study with Charles Seeger. Well, I had never heard of Charles Seeger before. But Pete Seeger is a son of a first marriage of his. So there's a big, big family of Seegers. <laughs> and um, the same thing really happened there that happened to Amy Beach that she was becoming quite prominent and she was asked to, to please back up and you know let the uh, the Seeger family become a little prominent. He was, Dr. Beach was a very prominent surgeon in Boston as I say again who asked to give Amy to give up public concerts and teaching and concentrate on composing and luckily he, he encouraged her composing, and she wrote a mass and a symphony, that, which is quite something for somebody that age. And then comes uh, Ruth Crawford, who married Charles Seeger, and that Seeger family got bigger and bigger as I, <laughs> as I learned more about them. She was born in Florida. And she was the first woman was or, awarded a Guggenheim Fellowship to study composition in Europe. And she studied in Berlin and several other places and found it very, very interesting. And when she came back to this country, she met Charlie Seeger and married him. And they had quite a few children. The wonderful thing about their being together was they both loved folk tunes. They loved American music. And uh, thank goodness, because several books were written and uh, distributed. And actually, she was quite a teacher, Ruth Crawford, and taught her children through the American folk songs, which I think is a lovely, lovely way of doing it. And they together were, uh, went to, wa to Washington to work with the uh, people down there to work on several folk tune books. 
to, for children and, and for everything. And of course, it, that also was a problem for Pete Seeger because the, a lot of the tunes were thought not politically correct. Here is a quote from Peter Pete Seeger, recalling his father and Ruth. They would be in a corner of the barn for hours, gales of laughter coming out. She joined a family of agnostics, and she left behind all the small town Methodist life she'd done as a child. Later, we would open up two barn doors, sit on a settee covered with high mattress, huge mattresses, and leaned against the pillows and father would get out his guitar and we'd sing. School songs, better known folk songs, popular songs of the day, and we harmonized every one of them. So it was a normal thing to develop a very good, rich harmony. The collective music making of Ruth Crawford and Pete Seeger would later celebrate all the, the work that went into them and the uh, Gradually, we know folk music also began to carry the message of the party. Protest music was based on traditional melodies. I have to tell you the one instance when I saw Pete Seeger, and it was really quite, quite, a, wonder, what a, quite a wonderful, heart-moving moment. I was attending an, a, a, a large convention of, of awards being given to people in the arts. And all of a sudden, Pete Seeger walks on stage and the place erupted. And, and we all got a little teary because he was much older. He, he was, you know, walked with help. And um, it was just wonderful that he was there. It just kind of brought the whole Seeger family together. So it, it's, an, it's an amazing musical family of this country, even though they were politically sometimes not, not quite. They were thought not to be politically. I, I have something that I hadn't meant to to, uh, to say tonight, but I, I don't know how you feel about women in the in the arts on stage and et cetera, or composers. But do you you know the works of Virginia Woolf? I'm sure. You need a, a room of your own and time of your own to do your <coughs> to do the composing. So that was that was lovely. But these two pieces by Ruth Crawford, Seeger, she sometimes is, to, is put in books, Ruth Crawford Seeger, but I like to think of her as Ruth Crawford because that was the way she made her doing it, and she won the Guggenheim to go to Europe to study over there. So let me play these two works of hers, which are definitely atonal. They're not, they're not as, as harmonious as the, as the beach. But I think they're quite fascinating. So here we go.
something else. But it is quite lovely, and she, she was very good. This is called Andante Mystico.
Musicians are a very different bunch from, <laughs> we have our intricacies and, and bad times, and, but I am so grateful tonight for my musical friends. And so the piece I'm, going, piece I'm going to play for you is a premiere. It's never been played before except by the composer. <laughs> and uh, Hugh Sam, Hugh Sam, just stand a minute so we still know who you are. There were, there were three of us who taught at the Turtle Bay Music School at the same time and got to know each other. Hugh Sam was one, David Carlton was two, and I was three. <laughs> and it's, it's just, that's what shows the, the musical friends. We just, we always, you know, keep track of each other and what are you doing? And Hugh Sam is an incredible composer. Not only does he compose beautiful works, but they just slide off of him like the most beautiful water in the world. It just, I, 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 I'm not a composer. I, I took a course of composition in college and didn't like it at all. So it's just as well that I'm a, a performer and, and play. This, and this is a, a wonderful piece by Hugh. And I'm so glad you're here, Hugh, to hear it. And thank you so much.
You know, we have some amazing American music. I, ho I hope, I, I'm sure you under realize this. I, I, I mean, Hughes' piece is new, and I'm constantly finding things that I never knew about before. Well, I did know Samuel Barber, and there's a little story behind here. Um, after college, I went to Europe, Europe to study in, in uh, Freiburg. And it was a beautiful, beautiful state. It was a, not too far after World War II, so there was still some wreckage around. And uh, my mother was very upset once when she came to see me to meet a, a man who flew air, air, airplanes. And that, that's really, <laughs> she didn't want any more of that. I don't blame her. But um, in each of the houses of, of Germany, they had what they called America houses, which was very nice showing what we in America did. And, and I don't know anything more about it that, but they did a concert series. And I wanted very much to play on it. And I talked to my teacher, who was a very difficult, he was a wonderful pianist and a wonderful teacher, but very difficult on his students, very difficult. And um, so he, he looked into it. And he said, yes, you can do a concert there, but you have to play an American work. So he said, I suggest this by Samuel Barber. I don't know how he found it out, because he didn't play American music. But what he loved to say to me is, no mistakes, Ms. Adelot. <laughs> it always terrified me to have to play for him. No mistakes, Ms. Adelot. And he pronounced my main name very well. <laughs> anyway, he came, he came over to this country soon after to do a, a, a concert in, in, in New York. And I spoke to him on the phone, but never saw him. He was a nice, he had a beautiful wife, and he was a good teacher, but he was particularly hard on some of his students. And I, so I tried to, to play without mistakes so he wouldn't get mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> but this has several movements. I don't know, do you, how many of you know the excursions? They're, they're, it's a wonderful piece. Well, I think they're on your program, but uh, the first is just a, on Poco Allegro. The second is my favorite. In slow blues tempo. It's a gorgeous piece. And then the third is the very last of the series. And it goes very fast. Allegro Molto. <laughs> I hope you enjoy this.
Siegel family. 